Hey, so I thought I would do a sketchbook tour of what I've been working on on TikTok for the past couple months. So initially I started by doing random dice drawings and then I transitioned into just drawing prompts that my TikTok subscriber or TikTok followers suggested. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, this is the first page. This is where I had all of my random dice lists. So I'd roll for uh, a d20 for adjectives, a second set of adjectives, some nouns, some verbs. I'd roll a d8 for, uh, or I'm sorry, a d9 for mediums, and then um, I would roll for bonus nouns. And then on this page, uh, these were a bunch, this was just some things that I needed to restock on my shop, uh, but all of these were the TikTok inspired comments, and I got through most of them. So the first page was a randomized dice drawing. It was a combination of, uh, I think it was like drippy, spooky jellyfish, I think. So it ended up with this kind of skull boy, kind of cool. Uh, the second prompt was another random dice drawing. This one was, uh, it was like ghosts, um, camera, and then the medium was uh, unconventional, so I did it with coffee, and I also used some gold in it and some watercolor. Um, yeah, I did that one. And then this was another one of the random dice drawings. This one was icy, bubbly, death. So I wanted to, you know, kind of do a take on that. Um, the medium was watercolor. So I think this one turned out pretty cool. I like the color composition of it. And, you know, I thought of the like icy grips of death, but bubbly is the mask of the, the smiley face on death. Um, all in all, this turned out pretty cool. Uh, I'm still learning how to do fabric folds and do everything like that. I really like how I did this hand. Uh, I'll zoom in on that really quick. But yeah, I really like how I did this hand. I think it turned out really cool. And just a little light layer on the mask and just the color, the colors of this all just turned out really cool. And this is another of the dice. This one was, uh, it was like ghost, headache, um, and I did it in ink. So the story behind this piece was this person died by uh, a spike in inhaling them and even in death, they still have a headache. Uh, so I thought it turned out really cool. I really like the background of it and how all the lines just kind of go, the little shading bits, and just the little like headache bubbles. Um, yeah, this was a pretty fun piece, and I think it turned out kind of cute. And now we're off into the TikTok comments. So this was a Cyclops T Rex swinging. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, kind of hard to draw a Cyclops T-Rex for one thing, but all in all it turned out pretty cool. Um, looking at it now, there's definitely some things that I would change. I think I would go back through and make these stripes out of pen and change the shading a bit because this is a mixture of pen and pencil with some ooh -hoo -hoo markers on the back. Um, it's not my favorite out of all of these, but it was, my, my goal with this wasn't to necessarily always produce a great piece of work. I was just trying to create and just work on stuff. 
um, kind of test my creativity and test everything. Um, predominantly, actually I think everything else in here, I colored with markers. So it was also a challenge because this paper isn't necessarily designed for markers. It's watercolor paper. So it kind of absorbed it really quickly. And I think if I was to use these markers again, I would use a different type of paper. Um, but yeah. This is one of my favorites. It's the Total Oak. Uh, I digitally colored this, but I made the initial sketch uh, and ink work in the book. And honestly, I think it's, it's so fun. This is one of my favorite prints that I made. Um, over here, I'll put a picture of the digital version so you can also see where I took it. And I'll do that for all of the, the black and white works. But yeah, um, so the total loop is a mixture of a jackalope and a toad. Um, it's a mythical creature that kind of, you know, the lore behind it is part of my um, mythical forest creatures. And the lore of this guy is that if you stumble across it in the woods, it is said to grant you two wishes. Why two, not three? I don't know. That's what TikTok said. <laughs> um, so that's what we're going with. Uh, I have it surrounded by a bunch of mushrooms in kind of a wooded forest. And he's just super grumpy and I love him so much. Over here, the prompt was Llama Pizza Beach. Again, this is another one that I inked traditionally and then colored digitally. Um, but yeah, a, a friend of mine wanted me to do this scene and I think it turned out really cool. I really like how the digital work came out. Um, and yeah, with this sketchbook, I really wanted to push myself and do more full scenes because uh, I haven't really done that a lot. I usually just kind of create my characters with like a color backdrop or something, a shape, um, but I wanted to encapsulate things more and give them more of a more of a place in a world. So yeah, that's Llama Beach Pizza. This one was a pug smoking a cigar in a bus stop. Um, and I think it turned out really cute. I really like how it turned out. Um, somehow I got something on here. It looks like pastel or something. My guess is when I was working uh, on other pages, it, I don't know, it seeped through or something. But for this one, I wanted to kind of create a little scene. And instead of, you know, actually writing out anything uh, for these posters, I just put warm if some, um, which if you know, you know, just kind of a filler. So shout out to other artists. Um, I really like this one. I think it turned out beautifully. I love the colors of it, the composition, just everything. Again, this was done in marker and I was learning how to achieve certain effects. Um, especially in like these bushes, I've got some like nice little shadows in it. Um, yeah. Not much else to say about this piece. Well, let's move on. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the Pokey Fusions that were suggested. This one was a Magikarp fused with a Machamp. So basically the strongest fish Pokemon that there is. Uh, so for this, I made the head of Machamp Magikarp and the color Magikarp, but the body was Machamp. And again, this is done in marker. I really like how the body turned out, not so much this background. This is kind of a low energy day, so I just did a little bit um, and called it good. So yeah, this is Magichamp. Don't say Splash is ever useless again, I guess. This was the coolest Pokefusion that I've done in this book. 
It was a fusion of Mewtwo and Rayquaza, and in love with this piece. I love everything about it. I really love this orange backdrop to make it pop, and I love the Rayquaza accents throughout the body. But all in all, I think this one turned out really cool. And yeah, I, there's a little bit of a glow from the orb uh, going along the body, different places where the light would reach it, and a bit of a drop shadow here, which you can see more uh, in person than you can on camera, but yeah, this is a fun little dude. And this one was a mixture of a bee and a tiger. Uh, not one of my favorites. I like the idea, not so much my execution of it. I think it would have looked better without this circle, and if I put a scene in it, you know, if I put flowers around, or, you know, also put it in the forest, this creature would fit in my mythical forest. Um, so that's something for future. Um, that's the cool thing about sketchbooks is, you know, even though this one is done, I can always come back through here and see what I like, what I don't like, and what I want to try again. And I think that'll be really cool in a few months time, um, maybe even next year to revisit some of these and see what I can create. Um, yeah. And then this one was a vampire bottle pizza. Um, so I put the vampire in the bottle um, and put some pizza around him and there's a Bloody Mary right here which I thought was funny bats and other iconography for vampires or uh, creatures of the night and yeah there's definitely parts of this one that I like yeah it was fun to do uh, I was doing this in Colorado when I was with my brother so I was doing this one and a couple others while I was up there just kind of doodling past some time while he was working. Um, yeah. Moving on. This is a sketch. Now, I made a digital copy. I'll put a picture up here as well. Um, and I'm glad I made the digital copy because one, there's a lot of cool things that I could do digitally that I couldn't really do traditionally, but two, her head is way too large um, for this photo. So I tweaked that digitally and created a cool backdrop, which you'll see, and yeah, just kind of had, had some fun with that. But the, the prompt of this one was um, Strawberry Demon, I think was, yeah, yeah, Strawberry Demon. Um, yeah, her horns are little strawberries. Got a little strawberry on her shirt. Um, got a pentagram and a little strawberry tattoo. Some other iconographies in here. And moving on. This is a fun one. This was a combination of a bear and a snake. So uh, it could be called a beak or a snare. I don't know. Call it whatever. Um, yeah, I have it stealing like a honey pot. Um, maybe the honey pot was hexed, and that's how it turned into a snake. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I made these little uh, honeycombs uh, around it as just a little different kind of background, not necessarily that I'd be seen. Um, I do think I will redraw this one again in my mythical forest. Um, I think a lot of these creatures will just fit in that mythical forest and I can just create a whole little series 
out of that, which I think will be super fun. Um, yeah. Moving along. This is a mixture of uh, markers and colored pencils, by the way. Uh, that's usually how I did my coloring throughout this book, was markers and colored pencils. Yeah, moving along. This next one was a cat and a penguin hybrid. Um, so I have a little orange tabby mixed with a emperor penguin and a little baby. Um, I think this turned out pretty cool. I like the little fish backgrounds and there's like a ball of yarn over here. Uh, but I really like the color on this one in particular. And kind of a grungier blue color pencil shadow, which I thought was kind of cool. And I have it um, popping out past the border a little bit, which I really like. I saw other artists do that, and I don't know, just adds more dimension to a piece. Not so stagnant or rigid. Um, yeah. Moving on, oh, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> This is a cork. It is a fusion of a corgi and a shark. And I love both of them so much. They're danger loaves. They're so cute. They're so fun. And I did a little little wave background. Um, just as something small. But yeah, this is hands down one of my favorite pieces. Out of this whole book. I really like the um, the highlights. I use like a blue as kind of a ring light around, and then kind of a light tan as the highlights. Yeah, this one has a special place in my heart. Next, we have a turtle spider. Um, just a cute little dude going by looking for some food. Um, Is this really big or is it really small? That is a question I'll leave up to you. Put it in the comments and let me know. Yeah, and this next one was a mixture of an elephant and a penguin. And I like how this water turned out a lot. I took some inspiration from Avatar The Last Airbender with that, put a little sun behind it and some peanuts and a ball. Um, I don't know why those are just like, <laughs> I guess like animal stereotypes, I guess they're tropes of, uh, of these animals, so I just kind of included it, um, just as a little visual storytelling. Elephants and penguins are some of my favorite animals. They are both just super cool, super smart creatures. Um, and like elephants in, in particular, just such gentle creatures. It's amazing the things that they can do. Um, yeah, so moving along. This is another uncolored piece. This is a mixture of a salamander and a happy frog. Um, again, it's set in my mythical forest, and I did do the digital one. I'll put that right here. Uh, and you'll see in the digital version that there is a cool little hidden gem that you might notice. Love, love this piece. I love, especially with the digital work, how I did the light rays, that's been like an obsession of mine with these digital pieces, but the light rays and the coloring and shading, I'm just really happy with how that all turned out. Um, yeah, so moving on. The next one is another uncolored traditional piece, but colored digital piece. Uh, the prompt was a cow being abducted by a UFO, but it's actually by another cow. So, its friends are coming to rescue the, all the cows um, and just take them to their, to their world. 
I love this piece. I created a couple different versions. Um, so here's the original and here is the uh, second version. Let me know in the comments what you like better. But yeah, this was such a fun piece. Uh, at the market, this has been a big seller. Um, people really enjoy this piece and it always gets people talking. Um, I had one lady come up and talk to me about the UFO uh, apparently in the Shenandoah Valley, which is near where I live, um, it actually has some of the like highest reported UFO sightings, which I didn't know before making this, but uh, now I do and now you do. <laughs> so yeah, I love how the UFO is cow shaped and the top is like an udder and the bottom um, is you know cow print and a little cow in here. Oh, super fun. Super fun piece. I had a I had a blast working on this one. Alright, and the next uncolored but colored digital is a dragon fruit dragon. Um, it's one of my first times drawing a dragon. And I had to play around with it a bit, but as you'll see in digitally, I wanted to make the dragon fruit the egg. Uh, so an unripe dragon fruit is the egg. And then it ripens into a full grown, full grown, full grown dragon. But the egg is emitting a little soft glow. There's a little person in here for scale. Um, so you can just see how large of a dragon it really is. Uh, a common trope with my art is mountains. Uh, I live next to the mountains and I definitely feel that that relates to the people near me as well as myself. Uh, mountains are always just one of my, they're my favorite things, whether they're the Blue Ridge Mountains or the Rocky Mountains or you know any other mountain range in the world. They're just, it feels like home to me. Um, yeah, so well, this was a lot of fun to do. Uh, by the way, all of these uh, are available, or all or most of these are available as prints in my shop. Uh, if you're interested in checking any of those out, the link is in my description or it's deviantcreations.com. Um, you can also shop on my Instagram at devkrea, but I'm also going to be releasing these as coloring book pages. Um, so you can get, you know, like five or eight, five to ten, I don't know, however many I got for a couple bucks. And you can just download those and color them yourself. And then also, um, I can sell like physical pages as well uh, once I figure out a good way to print those so that they're workable. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun as well. Moving on, the next prompt was another kind of low energy day, uh, but the prompt was eels, skulls, and like flowers. So I have an eel coming through a skull, and there's some bubbles around, some daisies, and I committed to doing ink work on this, and I'll probably go there and do some more ink work. But uh, yeah, I got kind of tired of doing cross hatching, so I stopped. But I think this would have been really cool with color, so I might go through and just redo it digitally and then color it. Um, and I think that could be either a cool little sticker or a cool print, uh, maybe both. Um, yeah, you'll also notice there's somehow stuff kept getting on my paper. Not sure what happened with all of this, but it could be from eraser shavings that got trapped in the pages, or I don't know. But you know, we live and we learn. Um, so yeah, moving on. The next one another uncolored one. Um, the prompt was goblin, uh, goblin pizza dragon. So it, goblin pizza is a delivery service and they drive on dragons. Um, yeah, <laughs> I would definitely tip your goblin delivery driver. Uh, you might not like what happens if you don't. <laughs> so another fun little piece. 
It took me a while to figure out how to fit this dragon in here, but I'm really happy with what I did. And yeah, turned out kind of cool. Again, second dragon I'm drawing, but getting better at them. And yeah, you know, that's how you get better at anything. You just gotta practice and do things that you're not really good at. And eventually you'll get a little bit better. <laughs> um, yeah. So moving on, this was a just a gray parrot. Um, fur and like feather textures are new for me, so I need to practice that some more. Uh, it kind of looks like chain mail, which is kind of cool. Um, and I use a Posca marker for this backdrop and just markers for everything else. All in all, kind of cool piece. I like it. Um, yeah, not a lot to say. I was thinking initially of doing like a couple, but uh, this is only a 9 by 12 and for the size of bird that I wanted to draw, I probably would need a larger sketchbook. And yeah. So this next one is a fusion of a lemur and a nautilus. And this piece turned out so fun. Uh, this is the original, and I'll show you the digital in a second. Uh, but you know, I'm starting up a peace sign, and I just I was trying to figure out how to combine them, and eventually just figured out that I could have it like coming out of the shell. Um, and yeah, and I was trying to think of where it would live. Again, it's in the magical forest, but this is near the mangrove trees. Um, so, yeah. I thought that was fitting being a hybrid of a land and sea creature. Uh, and then these are devil fruits. Uh, I've been watching a lot of One Piece lately, so thought that that would be fitting. Uh, maybe a lemur ate the Nautilus Nautilus fruit or something. I don't know. <laughs> you can come up with your own idea of that. Um, yeah, this is the digital piece. I'll let you look at that for a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I love the eyes on it and the shading is kind of cool. Definitely getting better with markers at this point. I like it a lot better than the earlier marker works. Um, yeah, so moving on again, this is a piece that was titled Red Moon Crying, uh, parentheses, that took, that went, that became emo, um, or something like that. But yeah, so again, fully marker, uh, I did a monochromatic color scheme with this, because I thought that would fit the red moon part a lot. Uh, so I have the moon crying by leaking into this valley falling between these two statues um, side by side that are in despair and crying um, I didn't really necessarily think of like deeper things while making this I was just making the prompt but you know the imagery it gives me is kind of the isolating feeling you can get when when you're going through it and how you might feel like no one else will understand but there's probably someone going through something similar as you who also feels alone um, so moral of the story I guess is that you're not alone and that People are there to help if you ask for it. Um, if you also need some space for you, that's okay. But when you're ready, people aren't that far away and they're ready to help you. Really like how this piece turned out. I made a cool digital version of it too. I'll put that over, over in this corner as well. But it, digitally, I made a cool glow about everything 
kind of added some more texture to everything. And ultimately, I think that turned out pretty cool. So yeah, this is nearing the end of the book, and it has been quite a journey up until this point. You know, there's 30 pages in this book, and I filled about 28 of them with actual drawings. Um, maybe 29. Yeah, probably 29. Um, and this has been a couple months in the process. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. It helped tremendously get over art block and create things that I probably wouldn't have thought of on my own. And as you saw on the front of this book, it's called What If? And that's my kind of approach to creativity. I think creativity kind of starts with the what if question. You know, what if you combined a Nautilus and a lemur? What if a cow abducted another cow? And you just kind of take that idea and roll with it, and you have fun with it, and you just see where that idea takes you. And I think that's truly beautiful about art and creativity. So this next page kind of more of like a fan piece, but it was also a comment, um, but I didn't really feel like reinventing the wheel on it. So kind of just more of a uh, uh, fan, fan art, but slightly different. So the prompt was turtle duck. Um, so for this, I made the turtle ducks rubber ducks and put some lily pads and made an all blue background um, to show them just like swimming on the water but I really like how this turned out it was done with marker colored pencil uh, and some white highlights but initially I didn't like how the blue looked so I started adding little wave marks and that helped break it up a lot and I'm glad I did that and you know I'll do a close-up on these ducks but I added a little glow to them make them look like rubber ducks, and they're all just following along, swimming, having a good time. But yeah, this is some fan art, essentially, of the turtle ducks from Avatar The Last Airbender, which is one of my favorite cartoons. I take a lot of inspiration from it, and I've watched it probably four times in my life. It's my go-to comfort show. I love it so much. And these little turtle ducks have a special place in it for me. So yeah, now we're on to the last page. It has been quite a journey. Thank you for coming along with me. Um, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, you don't have to, but it definitely helps out my channel and helps me helps me post more frequently. Um, uh, yeah, so here is the last page. It's a comic page. The prompt was Buff Pikachu. So, uh, I did a little comic. I haven't really done comic pages before, but it goes, um, excuse me, yes? How did you get so strong? Um, well, training at the gym? No. Boxing? No. Then how did you? Oh, you know. And then I have this like Chad Pikachu. <laughs> it's a secret with HM4. Um, it's just a fun little, fun little thing. If you know the Pokemon franchise, you know that that's the HM4 strength. Um, and then also, right here, uh, the lights are property of Lieutenant Surge, which I found was super fun, and he's drinking muscle milk. Um, I love how this turned out, and <laughs> it's just fun and kind of stupid, but I got a kick out of it and it makes me smile. So yeah, at the end of the day, that's all I can hope for. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this sketchbook tour. Um, you are absolutely amazing, and I hope this has inspired you to start your own little creative challenge with your next sketchbook. Um, 
if you create, if you don't create, maybe try and see what happens. You can also do something similar with writing or photography, baking, you know, whatever. Just try something new today and stay deviant. Have a good one.